We're back here at the gold medal game, softball competition at the 28th National Veterans Wheelchair Games. These games are co-presented by the Paralyzed Veterans of America and the Department of Veterans Affairs. We are at the top of the fifth inning. The gold team has a 6-3 lead over black. Gold is the visiting team. And we have number, th number three, Glenn Fretz, the batter. Glenn grounded the shortstop in his first at bat and hit into a 5-4-3 double play in his second at bat. So I think he's looking to do a little bit better here in his third time up, up to bat. Pitcher for the black team is Dan Sprotts, who gets the ball and a one bouncer over to first base for one out. Made a nice one in grab, pulled it in towards his body there. And Did a real nice job there. Out. Real nice job. Number 18, Raymond Kenny. And he's the catcher today. And I misspoke. It was Raymond that hit into that, that double play in the third inning. Glenn was at first base after his hit. So, uh, again, Glenn had a hit his second at bat. He was one for two. And Raymond is the one that bounced into the double play. Now, Raymond himself was on base in the, the second inning, and he was the victim of a double play for the batter hit behind him. So, Raymond's been on both sides. One time he hit into a double play, and the other time he was a, a runner that got thrown out at second base on a double. So. He's been involved in a lot of action here today. I think Dan's found the strike zone for the black team here, which should help them a lot. There it is. Drop that one right behind the plate. Nice pitch. Nice pitch for the second out of the inning. All right, Freddie Tamez, number 14 for the gold team, struck out his last at bat and hit uh, and walked as his first at bat, so he's 0 for 1. He thought he had a second walk last inning. He had a 3-2 count, and he watched that last pitch, and it was just on the well. So, took a strikeout instead of a walk. He's behind in the count now. Just a touch deep. Dan is dialed in now. He is not messing around. There's a ball down there to Andy. Andy picks it up clean, throws it on one bounce over to first base for the third out of the inning. Three up, three down. Now that's more what the black team wanted. Now they need to get the bats working. So Jim, tell me, you're, how long have you been participating in the veterans games? You know, I've been to about 13 or 14 of them. Wow. Uh, wow. I, I went to the second games that they had at Milwaukee, but uh, I used to have to work sometimes and couldn't get off work to go to uh, when they'd have a, a certain time of the month. I worked in the accounting department. We always had to close the books. So. Sure. Well, you know, again. But I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. The men, the men and women here have families and jobs and careers and kids and events, and sometimes it doesn't always fall into the right time. But uh, it's great whenever they can arrange their schedule to come to this great competition. The, the competitors, the camaraderie, the, the support that's given to the veterans in these different cities that host is just incredible. It's really great to see. Really nice. Always get a lot of great volunteer help, and we need a lot of volunteers to run these games. All right, takes, we're, takes a lot of people. It does. We're in the bottom of the bottom of the fifth inning here. Oh, Wayne's going to put him on base. They're going to walk. Is, him. Andy is posing, but they have already decided to walk him. So after they saw his last at bat, they figured uh, a single, a man at first is better than something way over the fence. So well, we'll they don't take too much to learn a lesson. Chris Parnell is the next batter for the black team. Tell me, how have you found uh, the Quest Center and, and the volunteers? How have you found Omaha? What do you think? Real nice so far. Uh, the volunteers have always always been great. There seem to be a lot of them to help uh, and willing to help on a lot of things. And the Quest Center, real nice facility. That's great. It's a... Uh, oh, Chris hits the ball. Drive. That ball is to the right center gap. Chris is off, and he is quick. Andy's ahead of him. Chris is running the first, going to second. Andy in the third. Are they going to send him? He is going. Here he comes. We are going to have a play at the plate. Andy crosses home. Oh, nice job. 
triple by Chris Parnell, and he's leading all the way from first base to home. I would not want to get in the way of Andy oh, no. from third base on a play at home. It looked Andy like a locomotive in there. It looked like a locomotive coming Oh, in. he was moving, and I would not want to get the in his way. center fielder actually fell out of his chair and was unable to get to the ball out there. Yeah. Number 17 actually yeah. fell out of his chair. Wel Welton Lockler, he uh, ran to the fence because that was a sharp hit by Chris all the way to the fence. When he picked that ball up and won and threw it, it spun him right out of the chair. But it was a good throw back into the infield. Chris has also had some speed. This is his first Veterans Wheelchair Games. Real strong athletic competitor, but never found the game. So this year, he's been hurt for 17 years. Uh, victim of a Humvee accident. Um, but just found athletics this last year or two. He's been competing with the Nebraska Barons Wheelchair Softball Team. Uh, member of NWSA, but he is just playing all sorts of sports now, and he's going to be quite an athlete. He, he looks like he is. A lot of speed A lot there. of speed. Well, that's great that he's finally found it. Yes, he's kind looks of... Looks like he enjoys it. Sports have reinvigorated his life. Uh, I'm a friend of Chris's, so I know him, and uh, he comes up and helps out with lots of different sports here in the Omaha area, both as a volunteer and participant. So that was a great hit, uh, a triple and scores a run, and Black is behind six to four with no outs here in the bottom of the fifth, runner at third. They're gonna be right back in this game. Looks like gold team is taking just a little bit of time here to get, a, get everybody in position. Gonna huddle their team up a little bit. They're gonna change catchers here. So they're going to do that. It looks like they're going to try to make sure that Chris doesn't get home easy. If there's a play to the infield, they're probably going to try to cut him down at home. And they need some good hands back here. Nobody out here. Okay, the free pass to Andy kind of hurt him, but. The batter for Black is Harold Hack. Right. Wayne wanted that one. Harold hit into the shortstop last at bat. Now, Harold's job here, if he can hit the ball over to the right side, to the first base side, that'll score Chris easily. But Chris has the speed. I think that any ball not hit at, at Kevin Patton, he's gonna score. But Kevin, Kevin's good enough, I think, and he's playing up a little bit. That ball goes to Kevin, there's gonna be a play at the plate. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, just out, here it is. And collision, and runner is out. Oh, Chris took, yeah, Chris ran on that ball, hit to the shortstop, exactly what we were talking about. Hit to Kevin. Kevin was playing in. Chris took off. The runner was and thrown out at home plate. So Harold hit the ball, but on a fielder's choice, Kevin Patton brought that ball home, and that, that fielder switch paid off. They brought Glenn in. Glenn had the hands to catch that ball, and the runner is out. Yeah, Kevin made a perfect peg there to, to nail him. But it was a nice, <laughs> nice catch and tag. Okay, next batter here is John Jones. John grounded into the shortstop his last at bat. Now, strategically, that was a little bit of, that was a bad play by Black. They had no outs. You do not run on a ball. Whoop, there's a ball hit. Hit to the third baseman. Gonna go to first base. That ball's up the line. We got a tag there. Uh-oh, we got a runner caught in between the bases. But he's quick, yeah. he's quick. He'll probably get back. Uh-oh, they got him in a pickle now. All right, let's see what happens here. They're passing the ball around. Passing the ball around. He's gonna work in. Yep, he works his way to third base. Nice base run there by Harold. Harold was a little bit off on that play at first, so he got himself into a rundown, but he has some speed. And, and in this game, where the players don't play together a lot, it's pretty hard to develop those coordinated uh, rundown plays. The, the fielders have to know how to backfill each other. They have to know how to run a runner, runner back into second base, and these teams don't have a chance to practice together much, so it's pretty hard to do something like right, that. Right, Bruce, you know, when you throw together a team, you know, of <laughs> fellows that are not used to each other, the timing on that stuff makes a big difference. Players, that can be hard. Now, on that last play with no outs, runner at third base, Yes, yeah, you were saying that. that yeah, was, the, the, the runner, the runner is not supposed to run on a ball hit to the third base or shortstop side. Uh, generally, those players will simply sit and watch that runner and then go to first for the out. That runner should sit there. There's two more batters. There's two more outs. Uh, any other type of hit he can score. But Chris took off, 
They must have decided that when the ball was on contact to take off, and Shelton again was playing up. Nice throw to home plate. It wasn't even close. They had him. They had him by quite a ways. Okay, our next batter here is double zero Ruth Colt. Ruth, the catcher for the black team. We have Harold Hack at third base, but we do have two outs. Ruth needs to try to find a way on base here or try to drive Harold in for, for Black to get another run here. You hate to leave that run sitting down at third base with two outs. Chris tried making contact at home plate to see if he can knock that ball loose when he was trying to score, but again, there was a nice play there by Glenn to hold on to that ball and make the out. What a collision there. Oh, well, we got a strikeout here by Ruth. So three outs, bottom of the fifth inning. After five complete innings in this gold medal game, gold leads six to four. We'll be back in just a few moments here at xable.com.